public national mourning. The 11 day operation to farewell the Queen is over and so begins planning for the next royal spectacle, the King's coronation. Michael Usher is outside Buckingham Palace for us. Michael, good evening. Her Majesty is laid to rest. The public ceremony is done, but privately, the royals are taking stock for the week ahead. Yeah, it's interesting, Gemma. There's now, whilst we have all finished a period of mourning, officially the royal family go into a week-long period of mourning uh, themselves. We saw them yesterday, obviously, and all of that ceremony returned to Windsor Castle, and we understand that's where they all are now. Certainly where I am at Buckingham Palace, the royal standard's not flying, which means King Charles isn't here, but he would have stayed in Windsor last night, and we know that on the grounds of that grand Windsor estate, that's where both his sons, William and Harry have homes. They would have returned to those last night as well. Certainly William and Kate and their three children had a very long and busy day. So they'll go back now for some very private, quiet time. And whilst the past week has been involved in the business of state, I guess now behind the scenes, like it is after any funeral, there'll be just some business of family affairs. And we know that like any family, that also involves a little bit of friction with Harry and Meghan. So obviously a lot of eyes here in the UK on what they do and whether they return to their California home quickly. But officially, Gemma, a period of seven days of mourning for the royal family now, so quiet time. And what about the capital itself, the British people? How has that changed since the funeral? Is it back to business as usual mm. already? Rad radically. I mean, where I'm standing now, it is deadly quiet. It's me and the street sweepers, quite literally, outside Buckingham Palace cleaning up after yesterday. But um, the, look, even in the past week, Gemma, um, it's interesting. You've been here a number of times, obviously, and lived here. There's two Londons. I mean, if you go down around the business, the finance area, the market areas south of London, it's been business as normal. But certainly in central London, with all those road closures, the army of visiting dignitaries and VIPs, it was shut down, the biggest security operation ever. So there was this fortress central London for some time. But overnight, even in fact, once the ceremony ended at the Abbey and Her Majesty's coffin had passed Buckingham Palace and was transferred to the State Hearst to go to Windsor, central London opened up uh, very quickly. And today, even though yesterday was a public holiday here, today in the new morning, mid-late morning, um, it's business as usual. Everyone's gone back around their business, but there's certainly an atmosphere of sadness uh, and reflection that remains. Many of the shops have tributes in their windows and all the papers are filled with all the coverage of yesterday. So some reflection, but bottom line is big busy London's back to normal. So that event is drawing to a close, but now we can look ahead to the next event, which is the King's coronation. What can you tell us about that, Michael? Yeah, that's all the speculation here, Gemma, is that that will be at least 11 months away possibly a bit longer. Now, that is going to be fascinating. As it was with his mother's coronation in 1953, Charles will be crowned at a crossroads in the UK. There's Brexit issues still. You've just had a change of Prime Minister again. Turbulent political times, post-COVID and all those lockdowns, and soaring inflation at around about 10%. And it's been fascinating standing here watching the coverage in the past week of on all the British broadcasters and in the British press of the royal ceremony around the Queen's funeral, but equally coverage of cost of living, inflation. So he will be crowned at financially a difficult time for the United Kingdom. So they'll want to be mindful of the optics, at least, of that big grand ceremony. And we know the Queen's coronation in 1953 was extraordinary at the time, but they were also very mindful of the cost at the time. There'll be a parallel, but it will be a grand affair. It is the crowning of the King, even though the formal business of it being appointed King is done in the past week. It's ceremony. And as we've seen in the last week, uh, this country knows how to do ceremony extremely well. So the coronation will be a major point when they finally get to it, Jim. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Michael, thank you. We'll leave you to enjoy that peace and quiet and come back to you a little later in the show. OK. Thanks, Jim. We've just learned of some of the finer details about this Thursday's National Memorial Service at Parliament House. A painting of the Queen will be the centrepiece of the ceremony. It was painted in 1954 by Australian artist Sir William Dargy, the same year as Her Majesty's first tour here. The artwork will be surrounded by golden wattle, sweet peas and dahlias, some of her favourites, we're told. As well as Anthony Kalia, the Australian Girls' Choir will perform at the event. They sang for the monarch during her trip in 2011.
The one-off public holiday comes with a sting in two states. Double demerits are coming into effect at midnight New South Wales, lasting right up until Sunday night. Penalties start first thing on Friday morning in Western Australia, enforced through the Monday.